Hi, uh, my name is Haley Comet, and welcome to my Cosmic Corner of the Internet, where we discuss all things astrology, and today, all things the astrology of 2023. What are the themes, challenges, and opportunities that are foretold by the collective transits that we are moving through? Within this video, I'll let you know some of the overall themes that could be expected, the shifts and changes, which P.S., the outer planets are shifting and changing and rearranging this year, and when those guys are busy, my love, that's a tonal shift we feel here on planet Earth. So within this video, we'll be breaking down the overall collective themes that we are moving through within the year ahead. If you're curious on how these planets are impacting your personalized chart, come to my free astrology alignment workshop called Align during the Aquarius new moon. It is a completely free event held online. You can either join live or catch the recordings after they will be sent out. It'll be held January 20th to January 21st. And what we're doing is taking a deep dive into the collective astrological themes and how you, my love, are going to co-create with them based on where they are landing within your chart. Because for some individuals, it can be a very potent year when it comes to career. Maybe the cosmos are impacting your chart where it's like, this is the time for visibility. This is the time for creativity. For others, it can be a really potent year around introspection and healing. So I really think of working with astrology as just an intelligent way of using our energy like why would i put all of my energy in towards love if it's a really potent friendship year like why would i force this move if next year would be so much more aligned for a move like i think it's an intelligent way of planning our year and setting our intentions so what we'll do is we'll essentially break down where it is that your sign can experience the most growth in 2023, and then we'll have a new moon ceremony. We can plant the seeds, amplify one another's visions, and really align with where the cosmos are guiding us within the year ahead. So I'd love to see you there. Free event, you can RSVP within the link in my description or within the pinned comment. And without further ado, let's dive in. The astrology of 2023. bucket that I want you to be mindful of as we navigate the cosmos is this energy around fortune coming when we are bold, when we are courageous, right? For the first portion of the year, that's January until May, Jupiter will be transiting Aries. And this is the first sign of the zodiac. It is the divine spark of life. And with Jupiter, Jupiter sort of flavors the sort of magic and luck that we are able to activate collectively, right? So with Jupiter and Pisces, the luck was more so mystical, spiritual, with Jupiter and Aries, it's literally fortune favors the bold embodied, right? Like those desires that you have, they are on the other side of your fears. They are the other side of taking a risk. For the beginning portion of the year with Jupiter and Aries, it is a time around invigorating a fresh new start, jumping feet first into impulsive decisions. Keep in mind, we'll get down to the shadow side of Jupiter in a moment, but it is an energy around allowing ourselves to not fear rejection, right? To jump into what it is that we want, to follow our instincts, right? We adore this about the sign Aries, and it's a sort of luck that can be afforded to us if we are able to face our fears, if we are able to take action on our instincts, if we are able to invigorate our desires and allow no fear to hold us back. And I also wanna highlight Aries energy is deeply emphasized within the year ahead. So even though that energy will subside when Jupiter enters Taurus come May, for the latter part of the year, North Node will also be in Aries. Now it's important to note with North Node, North Node is yes, what it is that we are collectively moving towards, where it is that we can experience gain, but it can also be a point of obsession. And the shadow side of Jupiter is this energy of excess. So while I am saying this is the time to go after what you want, bolder the better, take risks, put yourself out there, do know that the shadow side of Aries can most certainly come to the surface. And this is energy where it can be a little overly impulsive, right? Reckless. It could be a little egocentric. So important, while this is a year to invigorate your pathway forward, let the flames of your desire fiercely propel you forward. It's important to keep North Node and Jupiter energy in check because they both can sort of spiral into excess. So this is gonna be so great for those of you who are watching who are like, 
oh, I know I have this novel within me, but I'm so scared of rejection. I don't want to put myself out there, right? This is the time to put yourself out there because I'm telling you, my love, that yes is going to come after 10 no's. And Jupiter and Aries is sort of this energy around jumping in feet first and like failing fast and failing hard and failing repeatedly because multiple failures are the way to success. And North Node in Aries is also asking us to anchor into our own desires and our own boldness in order to yield the most positive results. Now, I also wanna highlight, there is this deep call for vulnerability and honesty. Transparency is very baked in. I do feel like there is going to be a collective shift around no longer wanting the ideal, no longer wanting the fantasy. With Jupiter in Aries conjoining Chiron, we'll deep that in a moment, as well as Saturn in Pisces, we'll also bring that to the surface. There is this shattering of the ideal and there is this embracing and this moving towards our raw expression, right? And we can feel this societally on social media, in trends, there feels to be this embracing of our truth, even if it's messy, even if it's not perfect, even if it's bold, even if it's out there. And I find it very fascinating because in all transparency, I already filmed this video. Let's take a moment to appreciate the set. I decorated it all cute and the audio was not salvageable. Unfortunately, something went wrong. I'm hopeful that this audio works better, but it's funny because typically when I record, you know, it's the first thing that I do. I like do my makeup. Um, today, I just realized last minute that the audio was all messed up. I leave for a flight, you know, in six hours or something I have not packed. And I realized that the audio was off and I was like, dang it. So I didn't really have time to like put on makeup or like, you know, this is me after a long day of consults, like kind of drained. And there was part of me that resisted showing up because there almost is this energy around being somewhat like polished and together and having my makeup. I mean, I have some mascara, but like having my face makeup, and you know not being a hot mess after working all day and that's just not the case right now like y'all are just getting the most real version of me right now and i think that is aligned i mean yes it was audio issue but i do think it speaks to this overall theme we're on this move towards vulnerability we're not satisfied as a collective with the fake with the ideal we don't want to be sold the dream right any longer there is an energy with jupiter in aries around emboldening authenticity, emboldening individuality, even if your truth is messy. This is emboldening honesty, right? Like if you want an honest opinion, ask your Aries friend, like they are blunt, they will tell it how it is. And with Jupiter and Aries, I feel that a lot of humanity is going to be a little bit more honest about who it is that they are. And as well as with Jupiter meeting up with Chiron come March, there is this expansion as it relates to our wounding, right? Like it feels like energy around, it's okay not to be okay. Like there feels to be an expansion around collectively where it is that we've been wounded, as well as individually finding more expansion around where it is that we've been wounded, not acting like we are okay and like we've got it all together any longer. With Jupiter on Chiron, there feels to be this mass expansion of our suffering, which doesn't sound pleasant. You know, Jupiter does expand when it touches for better and for worse, but this mass sort of moving towards our collective shadow or a collective wounding, where it is that we have had that ouch sensation, right? Not putting a band-aid on it, not acting like it's all fine. It just feels like in the beginning portion of the year, there is this exposing around, it's not fine. It is deeply not fine um, and collectively growing because Jupiter is expansion through that realization, through that emboldening of our honesty, right? Through that expansion of our collective wound, right? With Chiron and Aries, where it is that humanity has suffered with Jupiter and Chiron. It's like, we can only grow when we acknowledge that there's a huge problem and don't act like it's all fine. So it just feels like the beginning portion of the year Things are getting real and there's an expansion around finally talking about it or finally putting down the mask around, let's not pretend any longer that it's all, that it's all good. Let's really embrace transparency. And so I feel like we'll feel that in a lot of different ways, whether we'll feel that when it comes to like news, government, society, social media, look for these waves around moving towards transparency, moving towards honesty and admitting with Jupiter on Chiron, hey, I'm actually not okay. What I am concerned about, because with Jupiter in Aries, you know, Jupiter is excess. So it does embolden the Aries energy quite a bit, and it can go to excess with the Aries energy, which is selfish behavior, 
weaponizing one's wound, that is what I'm concerned about with Jupiter and Aries conjunct Chiron. Is this energy, yes, there can be this freedom if we're able to collectively move towards where it is that, we, that we've been wounded, but I am worried about individuals that do have like extreme ideologies just with Jupiter on Chiron, feeling emboldened for resorting to violence or other Aries-like themes because of where it is that they've been hurt. Like the journey of Chiron is not just staying in the hurt, right? It's about diving into the hurt and allowing yourself to transmute it into kindness or empathy. Um, I feel called to share a little story because Chiron will be important within the next couple of years, both this aspect and the North Node will eventually conjoin Chiron, so it'll be involved in eclipses. But Chiron is a centaur within a mythology and not even like a regular centaur, like in a lot of texts, he had two human legs and a horse butt. <laughs> so the centaurs were like, you're too, you're too human. And the humans were like, you're too centaur. Like there was this energy around not feeling like he ever belonged. And if you want to deep dive into why he was like that, take a look. Sometimes mythology is so deeply disturbing. But anyways, so because he didn't have that sense of belonging, there was this energy around being on the outside, right? But he didn't allow that to make him jaded. He actually became this gifted teacher, astrologer, healer, right? because he knew what it felt like to suffer. He knew what it felt like to be on the outside looking in or to feel this lack of belonging. So while I find that this can be a time that's very healing collectively that we can move through and, and really grow through our wounding, I worry for individuals who stay in the hurt or use the hurt to embolden themselves or feel validated resorting towards violence or making other people hurt. That's not the journey of Chiron. Chiron is all about, this sucked for me and I want to dedicate my life into ensuring it doesn't happen for other people. How can we move towards healing so this doesn't occur rather than I hurt so you have to hurt? And I worry because with the Aries energy, again, I'm not coming for Aries, Aries' this archetype can be very self-oriented. So while I do do you see the potentiality around moving towards this collective healing? I worry that some people could stay in that hurt or be on the offense because of that hurt. So I just want to encourage you when it comes to your life with Jupiter on Chiron, it's almost like the scalpel energy where it digs up where it is that we've been wounded. And that can hurt to deal with, but allowing what it is that you dig up now that that's out, allowing yourself to pave a pathway forward, to grow forward, to also appreciate what it is that that wounding taught you the unique brand of empathy that it gave you and that you can weave into your own offerings and magic. So I want to take a deeper dive into Saturn and Pisces because this also kind of co-signs the certain honesty that Jupiter and Aries is seeking to find in the beginning portion of the year and that North Node Aries is seeking to find in the latter half of the year because Saturn is where it is collectively that we are restricted, right? It's sort of this exposing energy around exposing what in our life is not built to last. And with Saturn and Pisces, it's exposing spirituality. I've done a deep dive video. I'll do a deep dive video on all of these transits, but I just want to support you and empower you with the overall themes that can be expected. So with Saturn in Pisces, it's testing spirituality, it's testing escapism, and it's testing fantasy. And that's why I'm saying with Saturn in Pisces, the fantasy's veneer is beginning to show cracks. The dream that has been projected to us is beginning to fade away. The truth will set you free and lies will keep you imprisoned is the vibe of 2023. It is deeply important to be as honest and straight up <laughs> as possible. With Saturn and Pisces, people who are living in a dream, people who are living in fantasy, people who are living in la la land, like with Saturn, there can be some negative ramifications or things can get a little challenging. Again, I'm not saying this to inspire fear, but Saturn Pisces is making us get real. It's making us get real around where it is that we've lived in fantasy, where it is that we've lived in a lie, what lies we've bought, what lies we've been sold, right? That's what I'm saying. With Saturn Pisces, we're not going to gravitate as much towards photoshopped imagery and influencers who project like everything's perfect. With Saturn Pisces, that veneer, that projection is beginning to show its cracks, right? So it is deeply important with Saturn and Pisces that you are as honest with yourself as with others because those who have not been being honest, who have been escaping from their problems, living in a dream, Saturn and Pisces is going to be a really rude wake-up call. 
Okay. And so it's deeply important within the year ahead. There's lots of other things with Saturn and Pisces, but I really want to embolden you to be honest, to be forthright, to get real with yourself, to get real around what it is that you have run from or not dealt with within your world. I want you to get real with your spirituality. If it's been built on a solid foundation, I want you to get real and really live out your compassion rather than just projecting it, acting like you're something that you're not. 2023 is about authenticity. It's about vulnerability. Hence why I'm coming to you with a headache and no face makeup. Guys, I know, I know I probably look the same to you guys, but my Virgo moon and rising is like really particular. So this is, this is a stretch for me. But again, with 2023, we're embracing authenticity. We're embracing vulnerability. And on that note, we're releasing people pleasing tendencies truly with south node libra there is a disinterest in being pretty and polished for other people there is a disinterest in keeping the peace i i am a bit nervous because with all this aries energy you know on the high vibration it could be moving towards autonomy independence self-sufficiency you know risk taking as i highlighted on the shadow side it can be you know doing what it is that you want at all costs. It could be this energy around resorting to more primal instincts, violence, things of the nature. So with the South Node in Libra, societally, we're going to be less interested in pleasantries <laughs> and being nice, honestly, um, which is good because there was a move towards not wanting to be fake, but with South Node, Libra, North Node, Aries, there's almost like an every man for himself sort of vibe in 2023. Again, I, I'm, just the, I'm just the bearer of this astrology. Like this isn't what I want. It's just something that I want you to kind of tune into collectively is this sort of greed or this sort of me first energy can sort of spiral out of control. And with South Node Libra, being less interested in just fake connections just for the purpose of looking popular or looking connected, like essentially any sort of fake energy in 2023 is not gonna work with us. It's not gonna work with our system. Like there is a move towards authenticity, being straight up, being honest, being forthright. Um, and so there will be collectively a less of an interest around projecting that you have all these friends or needing people to see with all your friends. Like. With North Node Aries, it's not to say that we're all gonna be alone <laughs> and single, but it's like, I'm not scared of my solitude. I'm around you because I enjoy being around you, not because I don't wanna feel alone, right? Or because I need people to think I have friends or I need people to think I'm in a relationship. With North Node Aries, I feel we're gonna see more of a shift around more people emboldening, just like radical, being radically single, like not needing to be coupled up or even different with Pluto and Aquarius. I feel like this will be a big theme. We're getting a hint of that. Again, more on that in the next theme. But I feel like there will be a move towards less nuclear relationship systems around person plus person. Like there can be a move towards, you know, separate houses or, you know, not necessarily having the nuclear family or having multiple partners. Like, again, this won't permeate with everybody's world, but with North Node Aries, there's a move towards radical singleness, living the life that you want unfettered by societal expectations and letting go of connections that you feel like you have to be in because society told you that you needed to be in them. So we're getting a preview to Pluto in Aquarius this year. It occurs from March to May, and then it retrogrades back into Capricorn. So we're getting a preview, and this is a long-term transit, guys. Like, we'll feel this until 2046. But there is this theme around really revolutionizing and transforming Aquarius, which is community, which is what I was saying. I feel there will be, as a result of this transit, a transformation as it relates to community. We're already seeing some Aquarius themes with AI, I feel like there's going to be the shadow side of that certainly expanded, um, the shadow side of technology, the shadow side of innovation. With Pluto, it does expose the underbelly, but it also provides an energy to transform through, right? And Pluto is power. So with Pluto and Capricorn, you know, there was this power towards 
Capricorn themes. Again, I'm not coming for you, Capricorn. I'm just saying Capricorn archetypes are big business, right? So with Pluto in Capricorn, there was this sort of like corporate greed, kind of getting out of control, right? Wherever Pluto's transiting through is an area of life of where the kind of power is. And so with Pluto in Aquarius, there can be my hopeful interpretation is that with Pluto moving into the sign of humanitarian affairs, the power is shifting to the people. I think it'll be a long, arduous journey to get there, but I think that will be the end result. But again, it exposes the darker underbelly in order to get there. So it exposes the darker underbelly of innovation, AI, um, humanitarian affairs, community, things of that nature for the purpose of transformation. So those themes aren't likely to unravel all this year, but we're getting a preview. So paying attention March through May around what comes to surface around those Aquarian themes. So when Pluto dips back into Capricorn, like I said, corporate greed, capitalism, like I know it's always been a thing, but I just feel like with Pluto and Capricorn, it was really showing the underbelly, right? Of these power systems, of these structures. And that story is being wrapped up, but not before it squares the nodes, okay? In August, this is power struggle. This is power struggles against the government, against the powers that be. And with North Node Aries, there's a strong call towards autonomy, autonomy over our own bodies, autonomy over our own rights. There feels to be like with Pluto squaring a attempt of a seize on our own rights. I don't feel like it'll be necessarily successful, but I think it's going to be a fight and something that we do kind of need to stick up for ourselves. Like with North Node Aries, it's emboldening our own right to advocate for ourselves, right? To assert ourselves. And with Pluto, there's almost this energy around this attempt for control. And with North Node Aries, emboldening our pathway, emboldening our rights. <music> It is not all bad. I'm so sorry if I'm scaring you guys, but um, I also want to highlight the latter half of the year, Jupiter will be in Taurus. So the brand of luck is more slow, steady, patient. Taurus is an earth sign, so I always like to liken it to gardening. Like with Jupiter and Taurus, we yield the most positive results when we plant the seed, water it, nurture it day in and day out, and don't rush the process. With Jupiter and Aries, we get what we want through risk, through being bold, being, through being assertive, right? With Jupiter and Taurus, we get what we want by having a plan and showing up for it patiently and groundedly. Of course, it's earth sign, so it is very grounded. It is very physical. It is very tangible. So I'm curious if there's going to be more of a move towards like gardening, wanting to live off the land. Um, I am concerned because Jupiter is expansion and you know, we've had North Node and Taurus and just food prices have been insane. Like, like I said with North Node, it could bring obsession, it could bring excess, it could bring greed. And I feel like we've been getting kind of a sneak peek of that um, with North Node and Taurus and also brings greed monetarily. I mean, I don't know if you guys have felt that. This has been the case since the beginning of 2022, but I just feel like since North Node has been in Taurus, everyone's just trying to make a buck and survive with inflation. Uranus has been in Taurus. Things are very up and down. And I don't think Jupiter and Taurus is gonna help necessarily with that. I think it's going to lead to a little bit more greed, um, people wanting to accumulate more, more, more in order to feel safe, um, especially with the North Node meeting up with Jupiter. Like there can be this energy around prices that are overinflated, right? Would be the energy of North Node Jupiter, having no real idea of the good, the actual price of goods. I don't mean a fear monger. That's not my intention. Positive manifestations of this is this energy around what I pray is Jupiter is the planet of finding meaning. So with Jupiter and Taurus, there can be a move towards prioritizing more so climate change, the earth, perhaps moving towards this energy around overall goodness, generosity with our resources. That is what I'm hopeful for. love on the Jupiter note I love that Jupiter sextile Saturn while it is in Taurus because you know good things happen to those who wait honestly with this energy like with Saturn making the supportive aspect it's like attune your focus to what it is that you want and show up day in and day out I do feel like individuals who are impatient can be frustrated with Jupiter and Taurus because they could be like I'm putting in all this effort why is it not here but I just want to highlight in 2023 it's a year about being bold about putting yourself out there and a 
fixing your gaze to the target, like not allowing nose and rejection to deter you from what it is that you want. Stay focused, stay attuned to what it is that you want. Like I said, with Jupiter and Taurus, plant the seed, water it, check in, move towards it. With Jupiter sextile Saturn, a lot of individuals will experience growth this year, but so long as they're willing to do the Saturn work, which is long-term delayed gratification, things of that nature. So my love, I just wanted to give a sneak peek of some of these themes that we can experience with this transit. And I would love for you to join for my free workshop, Align. It'll be held January 20th to January 21st. We go deeper into these themes as well as what you should be bucketing your time and energy towards within the year ahead based on where these planets are activating your chart. I would so love to see you there. Let's plant our seeds during this Aquarius new moon and make this a positive year. I am so sorry if it came through in a fearful way. Again, I never express this to incite fear. I simply want to empower you with this information. I am of the belief that to be forewarned is to be forearmed. You know, the changes that we are moving towards with Pluto squaring the nodes and Pluto dipping into Aquarius. I do believe these changes are for humanity's Best. I think we have to kind of more fully embrace the shadow side of humanity before we can move towards the light. But I do believe these shifts are necessary to get to that other side. At least that's what my optimistic Pisces little heart believes. So I'm sending you love for a powerful year. I hope to see you January 20th, 21st, two day workshop. It will be recorded if you cannot join live. And until we meet again, drink lots of water and stay cosmic. Mm -hmm.